Hello and thank you so much for joining us on Testify right here on Hope TV where you look and live. I am Sharon Aitore Wangenye and the story we're about to hear today is going to let us know that for sure if you have any doubt that God is a healer then right here in studio I have two gentlemen who are going to help us understand that it is actually true God is a healer he is a provider and he is so much more I host Bishop Jimmy and his son Joshua who both um, got healed of cancer yeah they tell you cancer has no 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 cure but god is our healer amen welcome thank you for joining us thank you so much all right i i of course start off with you bishop jimmy yeah. let's start with um your background thank growing you. up just in a brief as we get to the story thank you so much yeah First of all, i must appreciate the opportunity to come on set in this great media platform hope tv to come and be an encouragement to somebody out there. As uh, it has been told, I'm um, Bishop Jim, uh, the founding bishop of Cornerstone Ministries. And uh, I was born in Central Kenya many years back, about now 42 years ago. And I grew up in a modest family with four siblings, uh, two sisters and two brothers. I was the third born and went to school in Kirinyaga County. And uh, we, were, we were Catholics growing up, and uh, we were taught uh, to love God from when we were small. And uh, high school, I went to Kangaru School, Embu, it was the national school. And uh, after that, I joined the School of Ministry. I went to South Africa for my training in the International School of Ministry in Johannesburg. And uh, I've been pastoring for the last 25 years. And uh, we thank God for the opportunity to be born again and to serve. I'm married to Lucy Minor, and we are blessed with Joshua, who is on set with us today. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So, at what time, at what point did you give your life to Jesus Christ, and why did you even go and study ministry? Many would probably complete <laughs> high school and want to uh, study medicine or other courses. Why ministry? You're taking words out of my mouth because. Uh, <laughs> Because of my testimony, which I will share, and uh, uh, the passion and the way I empathize with the sick. When I went to high school, I went with a mindset that I wanted to be a doctor. Because mm -hmm. I had been with doctors much of my childhood as they trying to cure the cancer. And I did very well. I passed my exams and I was set for medical school. But again, God had a purpose for my life. And I gave my life to Christ quite early. So I started to understand how God walks or talks and how he deals with people. So after high school, my dad was excited that uh, his son had passed and I had go, uh, attained the grades that would allow me to go and do medicine or do anything like that. But uh, I went to pray. I'm a very spiritual man. I believe life is spiritual because God is also of life is spirit. And I believe that essentially I be spiritual. So I acknowledged God in prayer, whether he wanted me to continue and do medicine or he had a purpose. Because I've always referenced my life back to my healing. And I got a reading as if God did not heal me, basically to do that, but he wanted to use me. This may not apply to, for everybody, mm -hmm. but that is my story. So after high school, I told my daddy I'm going to do ministry. It was a rough path for both of us. But eventually, my daddy accepted that it was good for me to pursue that which was in my heart. And I started pastoring at the age of 17. And right alone in that journey, I had to go and run how to deal with people. I believe pastors need basic training because our work, you're dealing with real lives. Yeah. So I went to the International School of Ministry. And uh, even now, I'm still in school. I'm doing my second degree in theology. So. I believe I went to school because I needed to learn how to do these things that I'll be doing the rest of my life. Yeah. yeah All right. You. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we're here to, um, you're here to testify yeah. that our God is a healer yeah. and he's a provider. Yeah. And you've seen him do that in your very own life and in the life of your son. Yes. Let's get to that story now. Thank you so much. I will try to keep the testimony simple and relevant uh, to uh, the times we are living in. I was brought up, as I said, among five 
siblings, four siblings, two sisters and two brothers. And uh, we grew up in a modest home. That time it was in the rural villages of Kirinyaka County, the Blessed County. And uh, my daddy was working with the government and mom was a businesswoman. And uh, we lived in a wooden house and there was no electricity. So one day after we had taken dinner, mama went into Takwazin. We were young. I think I, was, I must have been two years or something. And uh, uh, much of this is reported. And uh, she came to our bedroom and something was not the same. When she had put everybody and it was my turn, she looked at my eye. That's what she told me. I can only report. Mm -hmm. I noted that there was some right, unique right in the darkness emitting from my eye. That is my left eye. And she called the attention of dad and said, come and see this sight. And daddy came and he attested there was something. Dad was working in Haringam and uh, he was exposed. So he thought he would talk to his doctor friends in Kenyatta. And I was taken and the doctors concluded I had that type of a cancer called retinoblastoma, which is a childhood cancer that attacks the eyes. And uh, uh, if not discovered that, it would move to the brain and it has a very high fertility rates. Mm -hmm. So they took me there and doctors said that uh, I was positive for that cancer. And I respect the doctors so much. Every day of my life I pray for doctors because what they do is basically God's work. And uh, the story now began from that point. And uh, one of my eyes, the one that was, as you watch, it's not there anymore, uh, uh, was removed. It's called inoculation. It's part of the procedures. But they decided to fight cancer on the eye that was still seen and still sees today. Mm -hmm. And they also discovered the cancer had moved towards the brain. So they were just doing what doctors do. I mean, trying to, to treat, leaving the rest to God. And it was not a joke because um, I was not the only one with this cancer that time. And you remember those are many years back, 40 years ago. So the treatment of cancer was in the infancy, in large, the large Africa, including Kenya. So they only did what they could do and uh, just waiting to see how we would respond. And uh, most of my fellow ch uh, children passed on. So I came out my bed to tell somebody out there not to give up. And um, I was in Kenyatta for quite some time, almost for four years. My family had to move from central Kenya to come and live in Haringam. For four years? Yeah, I was in hospital. In and my out or? No, most of the time I was there. Uh, it was like also they wanted to, uh, what do you call it, like research or something, because yeah. I was not dying, Shalom. Yeah. So I stayed there with the doctors. Much of my early childhood was spent in Kenyatta Hospital, and the Lekons are there. Mm. And um, uh, the doctors did not really believe uh, my be I would come out alive. At a point, they told my parents to just take me home and just watch over me. Were you, were you sickly? What do your parents no, tell you? Uh, when I was young, uh, the only thing is that they, you know one eye is removed. They are tr treating the other cancer yeah. eye for yeah. cancer, and I am staying there. I stayed in the hospital quite some time, and uh, um, at a point they had to tell me to go home and uh, keep now coming back for for what do you call them for clinics, mm -hmm. which I did for quite some time. But during one of the nights in Kenyatta Hospital. And uh, this is why it's a television program, so we must bring in God. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, something amazing happened, and I want to send a disclaimer. I don't have all the details. I was a child. But during that procedure of being treated, I remember one night, and um, I was small, and uh, a man came into the ward. It was allowed 11. And I was treated by doctors from outside. There was one who was from Germany and others. So I was used to white people. So I thought it was one of them. But this time, whether it's a vision or whatever, I don't know. Uh, a man came in and uh, he was having long hair. And um, he stooped down to get to my level and touched his eye. I was not asleep. 
God is my record. I don't need to come here and exaggerate. And uh, he touched my hand. He says, I'm Jesus. I've healed you. Whether it was a childhood fantasy, I don't know. But what happened after that is what proves this could have, have been a divine intervention. Because after that, the doctors realized this eye was, the mass was clearing so fast. Mm. That cancerous mass or tumor. And after some time, I was declared cancer free. So that man, I believe, is the reason I'm here today. His name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. We kept coming back for clinic, including my younger brothers who were carried into that. It was a little bit traumatizing. We would go there as a family so that the doctors wanted to be sure he doesn't come back. And uh, yeah, it has never come back. And how was it for you as a child? You know, yeah. you probably had maybe seen other children playing out there. Yeah, that, thank you and for that question. My childhood after now leaving school, I joined school quite late because I joined school at seven. That is nursery. So I remember what you're asking. The first day daddy and mommy took me to the school. It had a population of more than 500 children. By this time, were you declared cancer free or not? Yeah, I was okay now. Yeah. You see, I'm out there now. I could join school. I was seven years, I was raped because of the years spent in hospital. Mm. And they left me in school. And I'm telling you, Shalom, it was the most painful day because every child cared to behold this sight of a boy without one eye. Yeah. And that defined much of my childhood. But mommy and daddy protected me from that. I was so, I tell people, I was so protected that I did not have to do the chance to do what other young people do. It was school, home, and uh, over the weekends, they would just make sure I'm not all out there. But at a point, I mastered that uh, I needed to face life by myself. And uh, I decided it was not going to affect me again. I took myself that I was going to prove everybody along by performing well in school, which I did. I was among the tops. And that, at a point, really neutralized that uh, bit of looking funny. And uh, I know parents that have children that are disabled, or sometimes it's very hard, not only for the parent, but also for the children. And that's where also I was introduced to God so so early and my parents, parents yeah, yeah though they were catholics mm -hmm. uh they would tell me there's um, a god who loves me so that and also the family support so whatever you said didn't care matter for me because i had people who loved me mm -hmm. and that circle of love and also some teachers came in and uh, demystified this so uh, I, I was able to cope and uh, i'm glad that i had all these people in my life and above all jesus christ who became so real to me from when I was quite young. So I defined my life not from the body, but from the spirit. I would, uh, uh, one time I, I, I started telling people, I'm a, a spirit who lives in a body. Mm -hmm. So it is not me with one eye. It is my body, which is my house. And that helped me through high school and through high, I mean primary school, high school, into other settings that I found myself in. It doesn't bother me at all. Neither does it bother my son, because my son had a mentor in me. And uh, he has never cared about that. And we will get to hear his yeah, story yeah, yeah. in just a short yeah, while. Yeah. Thank you for staying with us. Let's take a short break and then be right back. Mm -hmm. 